But let's rewind and go back to time. This whole video started out with my conclusion, my assumption, my thought, whatever you want to call it, that time, inside the dimension of time, if there is a supernatural, that it exists inside the dimension of time. So from everything I just said and everything that I just talked about, I want to come to this point and why I have this thought. So if everything on a cellular level is time symmetric, that would mean no past, no future. That would mean everything past, present, future is always in the now. What does science have to say about now? So for this, we're going to go back a little bit and talk about particle physics. And in talking about the now, we're going to talk about this thing called quantum entanglement. So quantum entanglement basically, and I'm going to explain more in depth of what it is and how it relates to this topic of time, but basically when two particles are formed by spontaneous energy, then the particles are connected, entangled together, even when they're separated billions of light years apart. So how scientists have tested the quantum entanglement is that they have created this these two particles out of spontaneous energy. I don't think it's really spontaneous energy if you created it, but whatever. So they created out of this energy source two particles. And when you measure the particles, they will either come out positive or negative. Now, it's more complicated than that because there's this thing called spin that is with the particles, but the particles don't spin. Um, it's just what they call it. And then there's this thing of waveforms and a collapsible waveform. And just, it's all too complicated. So I'm trying to simplify things for you. So for simplicity's sake, we're gonna say that when you measure a particle, it comes out either positive or negative. So once you measure that particle in the same direction of measurement, once you measure the two particles, one of the particles will come out positive and the other one will come out negative. And so the crazy thing about this is that before the particles are measured, they are both in what's called a superposition. They are both positive and negative. And then once one of the particles is measured, the other one simultaneously with zero delay in time whatsoever will come out the exact opposite. So if this one becomes, they measure it and it comes out positive, this one will be negative. If they measure this one and it comes out negative, this one will be positive. And scientists have said, well, maybe somehow the particles communicate with each other that, okay, I'm going to be positive, so you come out negative or, you know, vice versa. But through experimentation, this is not at all the case. And they have done many, many, many scientific studies about this, but it's it's always 100% the case. Like many scientific experiments has always come out the case that no matter how the particles are measured, because depending on how the particles are measured, there's a 50, obviously there's a 50-50 chance if it's going to come out positive or negative. But 100% of the time, if they measure this particle and it comes out positive, the other one, no matter the distance, no matter, there's no delay in time at all whatsoever they will come out opposites of each other. They are entangled quantumly together. It's it's like everything is, every, all the particles are in the superposition. And then once measured, then we can see what they are. But before we look, before we see what they are, it's all just energy. It's all the same thing. So how quantum entanglement relates to time is that time, in order to measure it, you have to have two different points to measure. You have to be able to measure the distance between the two. But because of quantum entanglement, the particles, there's no distance to measure. So time is not a thing. So there is no distance of time between the particles, which means that time on that scale is just a static block universe. And I'm coming back to that because block universe is very important. In the block universe, essentially, our universe would look like just a static block if you were looking at it from the outside in. Some people say this is how God sees our universe. It's a static block universe. You can look, you know, left or right and see the past or future, and you can look the other way and see past or future. It's just you see 
time laid out in front of you. It's just a static block universe. So this means on a cellular level, the past and future are no different than left and right. So if that's the case, one might ask, why do I remember the past but have plans for the future? But Apparently, that's only our perception of it. Scientifically speaking, there is only now, and there will only ever be now. Time only becomes a distance when you have two points to measure it by. But in particle physics and quantum entanglement, there's nothing to measure. So our perception of memory tells us that time is linear, but the science says that's that's only our perception of it. Time is not linear. If time and space is always now, that means everything is infinitely constant, which leads back to what I was talking about. It's called the block universe. So as we've already talked about, we don't know what causes the forward motion of time. We've thought it was the law of thermodynamics and entropy, but as quantum physics tells us that as entropy grows, it's not a forward motion of time, but it's time itself. Time itself is becoming more and more as entropy increases, but that doesn't mean it's more of the future. It means more of the now. So scientists and physicists call this the problem of time, that on the most fundamental level of our physical reality that has to do with Einstein's theory of relativity, uh, quantum mechanics, quantum physics, and standard model of particle physics on the most fundamental parts of reality that we know, time might not exist. And so, well, our perception of time definitely doesn't exist. But time itself is not at all what we perceive it to be. So then what is it? And so on this article that I read, this philosopher basically summed up how we can see time, that time in our perception is basically change and the motion of it and everything it's it's our tool to measure just that it's our tool to measure change so because of everything that i just talked about with quantum entanglement particle physics all of it it all leads to a, a view of this static block universe that we have uh, called the block universe and in the block universe everything is now there's no past no future everything is right now and yes when i say everything i mean the past and the future are right now and we are connected to it right now and i, I want to say an easier I, I guess if you can't already picture this block universe from what everything that i've talked about just picture all the particles in the universe if we could see all of them that are all quantumly entangled and there's no distinction between past present and future if we could see all of these things and we just looked at the universe from the outside in it would just appear as a block and we are here this is our perception of now but this is the past this is the future you can literally look at all of it right in front of you i think i've already said that but i just want to explain it again just in case you're not getting it and this view of the block universe is actually the scientifically most accurate view of what our universe actually looks like from the outside in. So there's a lot of different theories about the block universe and how the block universe works. And so I'm gonna briefly explain some of those theories. The block universe is known as B theory and there are other A theories of the block universe. And here's the theories. So there is the growing block theory which is the notion that the past and present moments exist, but that future events do not yet exist. It's continually growing. Then there is the shrinking block theory, which states the idea that the present and future moments exist, but that past events no longer exist. And then there is the moving spotlight theory. Again, these are all categorized under the A theory of the block universe. So the moving spotlight theory says the theory that all past, present, and future moments exist and there is a moving now or a spotlight area that is exclusive to the present moment. So here's the interesting fact is that all these A theories align with our perception of time but we've already discussed and we already know that scientifically our perception of time isn't real. So these A theories don't really, they, they, they appeal to our perception, but they don't appeal to the scientific fact, 
which leads to B theory. B theory, also known as the block universe theory, is the static theory and tenseless theory, all these things that B theory have, have been called. This theory states that there is no difference between past, present, and future, and they are each equally as real. Time does not flow, it is not an object in motion, it just is. And that seems to be the most scientifically accurate theory of our universe as crazy as that is to our perception that's what science says so these theories lead to many different debates in different branches of philosophy one of these debates is between permanentism and transientism and these are evolved from other branches of philosophy called enduranism and perduranism and so permanentism says that things always exist and nothing comes in or goes out of existence. And transientism says that some things sometimes begin to exist and sometimes some things cease to exist. So basically that's a bunch of just nonsensical philosophical jargon for asking the question, do things come into existence or do things go out of existence. And so this is another debate in philosophy, and this is where things get really interesting. These philosophies are called eternalism and presentism, which is the philosophy of how time flows. Pretty cool that there's philosophies for how time flows. So presentism says only the events and objects that exist are only those that exist in the present. So if this theory is true, what do photographs show? And what are we referring to when we talk about past events and plan for the future? And of course, this theory is typically held by atheists. Now, eternalism, which I would side with, and I feel like science sides with, is all points in time, past, present, and future, are equally real and equally exist. And here is the question. This is, this is where all of the research has come down to. If this theory is true, which basically science says it is, and everything that I've just talked about says that this theory, this philosophy is true of eternalism. If this is true and all past, present, and future exist, what does that mean about our free will? So consistently about B theory in the block universe, it, it aligns with Einstein's theory of relativity. It aligns with quantum mechanics, quantum physics. It, rel it aligns with uh, standard model of particle physics. And most philosophers, most physicists, and uh, if you think about it, even a lot of uh, biblical understanding and theological sense aligns with this as well, which is very interesting. It is the one thing that I've seen science, philosophy, physicists, scientists, uh, uh, theological uh, people, Christians, it's the one thing that I've seen everyone agree on this concept of time, the block universe. A majority, not everyone agrees with it, but a majority Everyone would agree, scientists, physicists, philosophers, theologians would agree for once that I've seen in a block universe. So this all leads to the question that I've already asked. If all of this is true and the past, present, future all exist all at once right now, what does that mean about our free will? And it's for this reason alone that a lot of physicists, scientists, they hate the idea of a block universe because what does it mean for free will? They hate it despite the fact that it still makes sense uh, in like every area. I mean, the block universe is basically saying that the future is set in stone. It's, it's there. So if the future is set in stone, what does that mean about our free will? So a lot of this information and a lot of these studies came from um, an article that I read that was basically from a lot of physicists. Wow. So all of these studies that I've done on time came from this one article that I read um, about in, I say, I read this one article, but then I read it and I was like, wait, what's that? And then it led me here, there, there. So it took me like weeks to get through the article because I had to learn all the stuff that they were talking about in it. But this article basically was written uh, from this conference called Time and Cosmology, where a bunch of physicists, scientists, 
uh, philosophers got into a room and discussed and debated time and how it relates to cosmology. And they even have a website for it. There's a bunch of the lectures on there and a bunch of papers that were written and came out of it. It's really cool. Just Google it. Time and Cosmology Conference 2016. I believe it was in Ontario, Canada. But one of the uh, philosophers that was there debating with these physicists that were against the block universe said that the block universe is not a changing picture, but it is a picture of change. So a question that was asked is how can the weather for next Thursday be set in stone when next Thursday doesn't exist? And what this philosopher argued is that next Thursday does exist. It just doesn't exist in our perceivable present moment that we call now. And she also stated at the end of the article and at the end of the conference that she said a lot of physics could use philosophy. And she said for those who would like to learn more, she recommends Aristotle. When I read that, I was like, oh, philosophy for the win. So this entire study of time is what led me into, as you see now, the study of free will and whether or not we have free will. So the next video or videos that I do will be an entire series of videos or video about what I found about the science of free will, uh, the philosophy of free will, and whether or not we have free will and whether or not it exists. But let's rewind and go back to time. This whole video started out with my conclusion, my assumption, my thought, whatever you want to call it, that time, inside the dimension of time, if there is a supernatural, that it exists inside the dimension of time. So from everything I just said and everything that I just talked about, I want to come to this point and why I have this thought. And just to point out, these are my own subjective thoughts. I don't have any, there's no like truth based in this. But if you do want to apply it to the science of things like I did, and you say, hey, that makes sense, then maybe it is true. Maybe it is truth based. Maybe there's something to it. But this is my thought process and thought pattern. This might seem very out there to a lot of you, but hey, that's okay. Um, <laughs> whatever. So I want to start this by saying I watched this documentary on Netflix that explained my thoughts better, <laughs> I should say. And it, it was just a part of the documentary. And it, the documentary was called Heal. And in that, uh, they said they were talking about prayer and how prayer, people think that prayer is just this uh, spiritual, loosely kind of talking to air kind of thing. But then this uh, scientist, or maybe he was a psychologist, explained, no, we actually have the science for it now. And what he equated the science of prayer to was quantum entanglement, saying that when we pray, that we are accessing uh, our cells in our body are accessing the cells that we are mentally or consciously portraying to, or they're connecting with those other cells that we're praying for, those other cells that we're thinking about, that we have the ability to control that in our mind. And it's through quantum entanglement that we can make that happen. And so that's a different way of what I had to, what I was thinking and what I was saying is that quantum entanglement, it happens on that plane of time. It happens, I mean, kind of in that dimension of time. And so my thoughts are if, you know, you were to pray for somebody that if you think about it, our bodies heal over time. So if you pray for somebody of a physical illness and they get healed, wouldn't it make sense if you were accessing a pocket of energy that reached into the dimension of time and through quantum entanglement or whatever, pulled out, you know, the cells that were regenerating faster and you were just accessing time in that sense of, you know, instead of it taking six months for something to heal, it took an instant or it took a week or whatever you want to say. Wouldn't it make sense if through prayer you were reaching through time at what was or what will be any of it? That Wouldn't that make sense? So for me, that was one of the thoughts that I had of the supernatural possibly existing inside the dimension of time. So then I thought, okay, 
time, we experience gravity, but time doesn't experience gravity. So if we were, if we were in the dimension of time and we're able to access through quantum entanglement, again, any area that we uh, wanted, wouldn't we be able to access a place or uh, through quantum entanglement, through the cells in our body, whatever you want to call it, the more scientific term about it, wouldn't you be able to access uh, places where gravity did not exist? And then comes in levitation, uh, which is, these are crazy supernatural feats, crazy supernatural encounters. I get that. If it's out there, whatever. This is just where my brain goes. This is how I think. These are my own subjective thoughts. Who knows if any of this is true, but this is just me thinking out loud. And then this is an obvious one, but time travel. Obviously, for time travel, if you were looking outside of the universe at, you know, I guess in the dimension of time or however you want to put it, that you would be able to see past and future as it was left and right. And you would be able to walk down the street into the past or, you know, into the future if you were able to be in the dimension of time. And then this opens up everything through quantum entanglement and through accessing the dimension of time if the super if the supernatural exists inside the dimension of time or it is the dimension of time. Who knows? But this opens up everything for telepathy. Tele I mean, teleporting, telepathic, tele I mean, everything telepathic, whatever, all of it. It just, it opens the door to all of it if it all exists then it all has to do with the dimension of time and quantum entanglement and the particles and, and everything like that. So that's a lot. <laughs> I get that that's a lot and it's a lot of out there stuff as well. And if it's too out there for you, that's fine. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm not afraid to be wrong. You know that on this channel, I <laughs> made an entire video on this just saying I was wrong about this certain subject. And so, uh, yeah, I'm not afraid to be wrong. And if I'm wrong, I'll fix it. I'll correct it. But this is all part of the journey that I'm on. Welcome to my journey and my the head and my thoughts that I have, no matter how crazy they are. Welcome. So as I said, my next video that I do will be about uh, everything that has to do with free will and why I still, even uh, with the block universe model of the universe and believing, having the philosophy of eternalism and all that, um, I, I find evidence uh, that supports free will and that it still exists. So I will make an entire video or video series. I don't know. However this comes out, this is either going to be one really long video or just a video series. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet, but um, that will be the next thing is I will be making a video on free will. So please be patient. Um, this stuff takes time this research i've done the research for all this but like this i didn't know that this was going to take so much time this week because i saw all these things and i was like wait a minute i don't fully understand that so i actually have to do more research to fully understand it so that i can talk about it further so hopefully you can expect the video or videos on free will in a couple of weeks but let me know what you think about all this crazy stuff down in the comments i'd love to know your thoughts love to know uh, what you think, if the supernatural relates to the dimension of time, if it's in the dimension of time, quantum entanglement, all of it. What do you think about it? What do you do with it? Let me know down in the comments and uh, it's gonna be great. And last but not least, if you liked this video and if you liked everything on this channel, go check out all this other stuff on this channel. I got so much happening. So last but not least, if you did like this video or videos, whatever I do with this, if, if you liked it, please make sure you like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you misfits in the next one. Peace.